Bringing you back home now, parents with children in the East Baton Rouge Parish School System have plenty of, plenty of questions right. lately. A lot of them coming into the newsroom. Will the bus come this morning? Do I need an alternate game plan to get my child home? Do our routines need to change? Yeah, but look, these are concerns EBR school leaders have been trying to work to address. Actually, the superintendent, Dr. Cito Narcisse, in studio with us this morning to talk a little bit about this. Good to see you this morning. Hey, Appreciate you coming in. Good morning. In. Thank you for having me. And look, we were just talking about the fact. A lot of times, these conversations are, are, are rough. They're not pleasant, but they need to happen. So mm -hmm. let's talk about what goes on now. I think it's very clear we're not going to be able to, you guys are not going to be able to stipend your way out of this or schedule change your way out of this. What's the path forward? What will you be presenting to the school board next? Yeah, so my goal is to present a current plan that they approved around. They wanted me to bring back elementary transfers. Right. I'm going to do that. Um, and then uh, continue to consolidate routes. So as I told folks when we started, we have actually a math problem. <laughs> We have about 800 plus routes with uh, 325 bus drivers. And so because we don't have that many bus drivers to run as many routes, it becomes problematic. And so what we've done is we started to say, okay, let's, since the board did not approve me uh, changing three different times, because if we did three different time zones for schools, you can actually cover the whole district that way. Um, and historically- the start times you mean? That's correct, about? start times. Uh, so East Baton Rouge has always done two times mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Right. So because they had approved that, we'll go back to the transfers. A transfer site, as you may know, is where a kid goes from one part of the city, goes to a transfer stop to another. Um, and then once we look at that consolidation, we have a new software that we have uh, that's gonna help with logistics. Uh, that will help us with the routing pieces. Um, with that component, consolidation, uh, that should help. We're actually also working, uh, the governor sent uh, General Haywood, who is uh, from the National um, Guard, to help us as well with the logistics, and we're working with a consulting team to problem solve those pieces. And so what I tell parents right now is if you could drive your child, drive your child. Um, uh, but we, we're gonna have buses out there. Uh, I'm more concerned about the families who don't have the cars or don't have resources to bring their children to school and so uh, but outside of that that's that's uh, the main main piece right now we also are updating the board twice uh, a day around how many bus drives we have and how many routes we've missed and those pieces but our goal is to cover as uh, many routes as possible and also have what they call a trailer bus that will go back and swoop kids with areas that they did not that they missed, they missed. so gotcha. Logistically then, what will that mean for students with those transfer points? Does that mean their pickup time is going to be earlier? Does that mean they're going to be sitting on that bus longer? Yeah, well, you know, the, when we went down trying to eliminate elementary transfers, it was because we knew that parents more direct routes to school. So direct routes mean, you know, I pick you up from home and mm -hmm. drop you right at school. But if I got to go to a transfer site, I have to actually wait, right, and go to another, another place. So we were going to bring back certain transfer pieces for middle schools. Uh, one of the issue, issues I had was I didn't want it to be elementary schools. They're much younger children. Uh, but, you know, the board wanted us to do that. So I said, not a problem. We'll make that change. You mentioned uh, the number of bus drivers that EBR has and 325 and, and doubling up on some of these routes, that kind of a thing. When you're sitting in that school board meeting and you're hearing from the bus drivers and hearing from parents and it's what you're creating, they say, is more work for the same pay without a raise. Uh, the ability to get to these school kids, all the bus drivers you have now have to work more routes for a, a future that doesn't have a raise for them in that future. How do you square that with them, especially when the district came in minus 150? How do we get another 150 drivers to help alleviate yeah. all these routes? It, this, is a, this is a tough equation to figure out. Yeah, I think when people, I think people are, are putting the pay more will solve the problem. Pay more will help uh, to try to recruit, um, but we still have a lot of different set of issues. I mean, um, we, we, we are one of the lowest paid for bus drivers, so the, myself and the board have had conversations about raising salaries in general, right? And, but we have to do it in a methodical way because we have a budget that has X amount of dollars in it, and, and I can't take all the money away from kids to give it to, to bus drivers, mm -hmm. right? So we just have to figure out a way to, to kind of balance that. And so what we've, what we've tried to do is what they call a three-way runway. And a three-way runway means the same we've done with teachers. We said year one will stipend, year two will stipend, year three we can make a permit sound. That gives us time to be able to kind of work through those pieces. Uh, but for, you know, we've actually, when you look at the total amount that bus drivers have gotten for this year alone, it's over $10,500 
for stipend, which is larger than any other group that we've actually had in the system. But we're, we have to do it in a way, I think, that will help everybody to feel a part of the system. But they have to give us some time to do it. This, these problems have been historical. I'm just so happy to be the superintendent's going to tackle them. So. <laughs> is there a way to get that done in this school year, though, so this transportation issue doesn't linger further into this semester or well, in this year? Well, we'll solve the transportation issue. I think uh, we're going to have to be creative on doing a few things differently. Um, one of the things that happened when we eliminated elementary transfers is actually more parents wanted to put their kids on the bus. <laughs> so that increased the numbers. But now we're going back to elementary transfers, they're probably going to go back and say, well, OK, I'm going to drive now. So it's ridership is the problem right now. Um, we wouldn't have had a problem if it was before COVID. Before COVID, you're talking about 600 plus bus drivers. But every district in the United States is going through this. When I went through this challenge, I was calling other large district parishes. They have the same problem. We also have been pushing to purchase a lot of buses. So like last week, we got 13 buses coming in that we just purchased. Uh, we were trying to lease buses. So, and we've been calling over 100 companies across the country. Mm. And they don't, they don't have supply. So it's a supply and demand issue. And so uh, I know people don't want to hear it because they like to hear localized issues. Sure. But, but you know, the New York Post and Fox Business wrote about East Baton Rouge, Kansas City, and Chicago going through the same thing. Same kind of thing. So it's just a matter of us kind of working through. But we'll get through this. So. As you mentioned getting through this, do you believe as you go to the school board next, presenting your plans, do you think it's a plan that will encourage potential bus drivers to want to be, look, you may not get the 150 that EBR is missing. Let's say you pick up 50. Do you think this is a plan that you present that encourages people that people. they want to right. be a bus driver in East Baton Rouge Parish? Yeah, the only way I've learned, uh, at least in my experience, on trying to help folks to come in is one, to make the process easier for them. So we got to figure out a better way to get uh, bus drivers to get quickly CDL licenses, mm -hmm. right? The second thing is incentivize, right? And, and the question is how much will you incentivize? Correct. And how much can you incentivize one group so another group doesn't feel like you're ignoring them? Because uh, right. what usually happens was because we've provided one large stipend to one group, another group says, well, you're not paying me. And then, you know, we have multiple groups in the system. I mean, so it's just a complex issue, but we'll work through it. But Okay, in the here and now, though, today, uh, the pickup times are still staggered for elementary school and middle and high school. Yeah, so our goal will be um, from now till September 11th. Uh, September 11th, uh, we will keep the current time that we have uh, Right after that September 11th date, we will go back to our normal uh, hours. Um, elementary schools are actually in normal hours. Right, um, right. It's going to be high school that has ended at 125. We're going to move up to their ending at their regular normal time. And then we're also going to be giving a survey out to um, to teachers to ask about how do they want to make up those hours and days uh, in the coming schedule. We presented that at the last board meeting. And once we get those numbers, we make the adjustment and we're back back to normal. I'll be picking my daughter up at 125 today. That's Absolutely. It. Yeah, they're making the runs I as, as a lot it. of folks do. Um, Dr. Cito and it's good of you to join us this morning. Difficult conversations, a lot still to get through mm -hmm. as we try to figure this out. Thanks All for right. those updates. Thanks we'll check in with me. you soon. Yes. Steve, let's get a check on that weather.